All right, so let's have a discussion about what this is. In my hands, I have an example of a caster plate. This specific one is for the BMW chassis. And what I'm gonna talk about is the purpose of these parts and if you need them and how you use them. To begin, I'm going to start by saying one thing that has been a common misconception, and that is that this piece here, we call it a horseshoe or whatever you wanna call it, that's what it looks like. This is not a brace to go on the top of the strut tower. This is a spacer to allow for clearance to your coilover underneath the strut tower. So as your coilover comes up through here, it usually has a knob on it and spacers and a nut and all these other things. You need a, for a certain amount of clearance for that. The other reason for the spacer is that some strut towers are actually shaped kind of like a dome. So they have a small flat area and then they're shaped like a dome on the sides rolling off. So they have a large radius of sheet metal here. This end of the caster plate, generally speaking, may not clear this dome if this spacer is not there. So this spacer drops the caster plate down and allows for clearance underneath the tower for the sheet metal. So this is a spacer. It's designed to go between the strut tower and the caster plate itself. Some chassis don't need these, some chassis do. BMWs typically have a very rounded strut tower, so that is why they are on here. The other important thing to note is that we call these caster plates because we generally design a certain amount of caster correction into them, specifically made for our angle kits. Although they only allow a small range of adjustment for caster by rotating, the plate after you install it. They can be used in different orientations to allow for even more caster adjustment if necessary. We have laid out in our installation guide the direction that you should be installing these. And the easiest way to identify left to right would be, you can see the offset of these three holes in reference to the camber adjustment holes. So you can see that this slot is much closer than this one, meaning that if I mounted it in this orientation in the front of the car, let's say that this is my driver's side, left side of the car, front end is here. Obviously this orientation is going to allow for more caster reduction if I put it in this way. And if we were to flip it and run it on the right side of the car, I could rotate it more to the back, increasing caster. Now the intended design for the installation is actually to reduce caster. So this is the correct orientation in this format, but this caster plate does have the ability to be run on the left and right side. That would be specific to something that you would wanna set up versus what we have intended the design to be for. Going from there, we have additional use in these caster plates where we can adjust the camber as well. With our angle kits, because of how much wider they are, we have allowed for the top plate to be adjusted quite far out. This is increasing your track width and maintaining a certain amount of camber. So if we did not have this adjustment in place, your camber would be negative 12 when you have an angle kit that clears somewhere around 70 degrees. So this goes in conjunction with if your control arms are 30 millimeters longer, 40, 50, or 50 plus, you can bring this baby all the way out to the furthest point of this caster plate. And because of the way that we designed these holes, this has three threaded holes in it. This caster plate has eight total countersunk holes. Every time you move it back, you can pick a different set of holes to align it with. So in the furthest outward position, I would be putting a fastener here and here. If I wanted to move it in one position, I would then be using a different set of holes. I could still use the two, but you can space it out and give more structural integrity. Also skipping this middle hole is good if you wanna utilize the full slot. And then going further than that, you can continue to reduce the amount of camber all the way to the factory location. Actually, the minimal adjustment is just slightly wider than factory. So all of these positions, I can go everywhere in between, and that is where you can get that camber adjustment. So that basically covers everything that you would need to know 
regarding these caster plates. These are made and machined from aluminum. These are steel housings with all of the components being made here. And the bearings, they're an M18 uniball is what we call them. So this is an M18 bearing. That is what 99% of coilover manufacturers use. Generally speaking, you can remove the top plate from your coilover and then you can install ours and it is a direct fit nine times out of 10. There's literally only a couple that I'm aware of, usually for Mustangs and usually they are Imperial or older style coilovers. It's the only problem I've ever seen where these don't work, but everywhere else uses an M18 as well. So some kits that we design don't have the camber adjustment ability. And the purpose for that is because it needed so much caster correction that there was no location to add camber. If you had the caster correction rotated all the way to the front, you can't allow for camber adjustment this way because you would pass right through the mounting hole um, that you're using to hold the, the plate to the car. So chassis like the S550 Mustang and a couple of others don't have any camber adjustment, but the kit itself is so wide and so pre determined that you really only need to run the top plate in that specific position. Whereas the BMWs, we have a wide range of mini, mild, and mega, so you need to have these options for that chassis. I hope that clears everything up for you guys. You can use this video as a reference, even when using the installation guides for the angle kits. This will give you a better understanding. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you on the next video.